with that i'll hand over to you uh, uh, khalid welcome to uh, the program and start your uh, presentation yeah go ahead jai baba jai baba everybody jai baba jai baba khalid jai baba how do i introduce myself well drop soul is a starting point <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yes as i was just one. wondering i was wondering you know uh, is at all uh, an introduction required i think we are all very familiar with each other and as sanjay ji said like you know the drop soul still uh i'll just put it up in a very short way to start with my family i come from a very mixed culture family born to parents my mother a catholic my dad a muslim 1966 fourth may the second child of my parents total we are six one elder brother to me and then three brothers and two sisters that makes it six for us from the very early childhood we've had uh, exposure to various religious rituals beliefs and culture even uh, thereafter you know my daughter myself i am married to a vidyarthi brahmin that's uh, college dear love my daughter she is married to a bengali roy family so it has been an exposure to all the uh religious beliefs in the world most of them i wouldn't say all as such you know at our place we celebrate from eid to diwali to durga puja and everything we have a small mandir in the house so my wife does the puja and me you know I am all around. Religion has never been a very strong point for me. I've never been very inclined to the rituals, and as they say, the dogmas, not so very uh, pertinent, uh, pertinent to my lifestyle. From early childhood, sorry, I don't have any uh, slides or charts. prepared so i'm just going in from to from an early age you know i think the first uh, magic or the first manifestation to happen in me in my life was somewhere in 1973 you know i must have been about 6 7 years old i was uh, you know we have had a very small place just one room apartment we come from very grassroots level so you know it was about i think midnight i was uh, i remember sleeping on the bed and you know old houses you had those uh, ventilators right on the top of this you know the wall so it meets the roof so we had this uh, high mansion wall like you know the room was very the ceiling was high and from these ventilators like spider webs rays or you call it um, uh, pin needles 
I felt them all over from my body for a very long time. It was pricking. It kept pricking, it kept pricking. And in agony, I called up to my mom, dad. And when I turn to them, I, speak, I, I see them, you know, in a kind of a Spider-Man web bag. You know? So every time I'm calling out to them, the bag seems to be raising up. And, you know, trying to tell me that if you scream, I will let them fall. So that was a very uh, uh, painful event in my life, you know. It seemed that it will never end. But what happened after that is like I began seeing shadows around me, you know, shadows moving past on the terraces, on the alleys of a house. And I began to get goosebumps. So that's in the early childhood. But this thing kept on uh, happening. After schooling, college, it kept happening. I've never been a person uh, who've expressed uh, myself very well with words. I've always uh, found the words were never enough to explain or express how I feel. As such, you know, it became something I began to keep things uh, within myself. These activities and the clogging up of uh, emotions you know, led me to express myself to myself in pen and paper. So I began to note down, write down small, small thoughts. Why I'm telling you all this is, you know, this uh, framed the, the way or the path for me to reach Baba. So I always put in my thoughts, wrote it on the diary, and always hid it and kept it away. Slowly, slowly, I began to, uh, you know, these words became into short parrots, small uh, poetic expressions. It was in Hindi and English as well. But the very thought of why these manifestations of moving, you know, when I remember one night I woke up. So, I was going to the washroom, like you know. So we, we we had a kind of a uh, kind of a chawl system. People who are familiar with Mumbai, they would understand the chawl system. So even in Kolkata, at that time we were in the chawl system. So you know the washroom was outside the house. So I came. I woke up at night, you know, to attend to nature's call. And when I come out. At a little distance, maybe about uh, six, seven meters. You know. So I see this lady, you know, she is the mother of our neighbor, my friend's mother. And, you know, fondly we used to call her Ami. Ami in uh, Atam means uh, mom. And she's standing on the corridor. I call her to her, like, you know, what are you doing here this hour of the night? Kept calling out to her, but she uh, didn't respond, she didn't reply. And uh, I just left it there, you know, finished and went back to my room. The next day morning when I confronted her, she said, no, I was not there. 
I don't wake up at night. So that was an incident. But these various incidents always drove me to a thought. What is there beyond what we see with the naked eye? And in this, I always try to find out. Professionally, I'm an interior designer and an exterior designer. I had a small uh, group of people where we do architectural, exterior and interior designing. You know, as a small business. This proportion also got me involved with Feng Shui and Vasco. It added on to my uh, earlier dilemma. So even Vastu can show uh, about energies, you know, energies which help our lifestyle, help us live in harmony with nature. In 2012, 12 or 13, we had a school reunion. In the reunion, you know, I came across a junior of my school, you know, he was about six, seven years junior to us. He was a student of Ifshita Rai Chaudhary. I think most of you would be knowing Ifshita Rai Chaudhary. Uh, if not, you can Google and find out. She is a trained which uh, she is uh, into Vika. So this friend, a colleague of mine from school, he had just passed out from her institution. And he was uh, starting his own classes, so he invited me. That's where my uh, journey of paranormal study began. We did malefic treatment, we did uh, paranormal uh, activities, we went for paranormal hunting and various other things. After about a year, you know, I, I found myself to be in a wrong place. It made me feel that, you know, no, Kale, this is not the place for you. But during this session, you know, we had come across this book of Kurshid Bhavnandi, the laws of the spirit world. This was part of the curriculum, you know, to know about things. And that set the ball rolling. After Kurshid, a friend of mine, she gifted me uh, laws of the spirit world. And it was you know, I got so engrossed in that book. I loved it. And then, you know, ordered the other uh, two of the series. Presently, where I stay, you know, on the terrace of my house, that was kind of a terrace garden, like potted garden. I attend to every day. So one day while I was on the terrace, you know, watching the plants and attending to them, you know, I got a kind of a call or a message, a silent message, you know, inviting me to look up into the sky. And uh, hesitantly, so, I looked up in the sky and saw all those clouds, you know, the white flaky clouds, snowy clouds. And within a fraction of a second, these pieces of clouds started arranging, assembling themselves in a manner to form a figure.
I not very sure what it was happening, you know. But then it had me fix it on that. I was mesmerized and I could not take up my eye. Instantly, it came to me like, you know, why not get a photograph of this? Why not click it? So I clicked a picture, a few pictures, I kept it in my phone, and it just finished. Went about my completing the thing, and nothing happened. After a few days, you know, scrolling my phone, you know, I saw the pictures. And you know, an image, I could realize an image there. And that image was familiar to me, quite familiar to me. I began thinking, you know, began thinking, where did I see this picture? Where do I relate this to? And uh, after some time, I realized, yes, this is the picture in uh, Laws of the Spirit World. You know, where it's a picture of that person, you know, Meher Baba, that is there. So when I tried to open the book and relate it, saw a lot of uh, similarity. Khalid, so sorry. Uh, I think Laws of the Spirit Bible doesn't have Meher Baba's picture. Is it Sound of Silence? Oh, sound, of silence. Oh, sound of Silence. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thanks for okay. correcting me. Yeah, the sounds of silence. You know, I didn't know what to do. But then at the rear end of the book, the last page, you know, there they have the address of uh, AMB City, and it also had it also had the address of. Uh, Narumega, the email contact. I did contact uh, Nanji, and she asked me to contact uh, the trust. I wrote to the trust. I sent the picture just to inquire what is this, like you know, expecting some divination from there. I got a reply. The reply was, "You are under the umbrella of Meher Baba. Baba has his ways of having people under his umbrella. So you are now a part of him." And then the details of the location of Samadhi. And some links, and there it began. Uh, this happened in May 2015. Yeah, ninth May 2015, and. Uh, By August, I was in Maryland. Still not knowing why I was there. But I reached there. I put up at NPR. I had a roommate there. Viraf. Viraf is from Mumbai. Is uh, in the banking sector. Miraf told me a lot of things about Man Baba. The Samadhi, I went there. I looked around, everything was like nothing which is familiar to me or the way I live my life or. Pray. I don't pray basically. I visit the mosque only in Eids, twice a 
เดียวมาเพลซ่าร์ always from the heart you know so when I enter the samadhi and lay my head on his feet Baba's feet I just couldn't control myself I was howling I don't know how long it was how long it was. must have been more than a minute or so maybe more and it's like my heart being wrenched you know totally digging with a spade whatever you call it succession entire within me you know it's like overflowing and pouring out and tears were a river nonetheless uh, got up and uh, while stepping back to move out of the samadhi my left foot fell on the threshold which i did not realize when i came out you know taking the prasad there was this person a sardar ji i didn't know him that time he told me that you have done this so i should wipe the threshold that i should not put my foot there but before i could wipe it he took out his handkerchief and he wiped the threshold Okay, I didn't understand. After the aarti and everything, it was time to go back to NPR. Well, I was walking somewhere. I had a prick in my foot. Uh, maybe the thorns and all which are there reached NPR. While I went, when I went to wash my feet, I noticed there was a big gash on my left foot. Trying to remember, you know, I realized it was the same spot which had fallen on the threshold of Baba Samadhi. I cleaned it, sat down. Gave the entire thing a thought, and there began my journey within the embrace of Baba. That was the beginning, and that is yet the beginning, and I am still on the path, still holding on tightly to Baba. Thereafter, Baba has given me a, a few more magical moments. I think I've shared a few on the group. There are three magical moments of Baba manifestation, and I feel so happy, pleased, and loved. With all the moments with Baba, my simple prayer to Baba is always. It goes like this: Baba, help me, guide me, show me the way, best for me, always. Jai Baba. जय बाबा जी बोले
जय बाबा काले ब्यूटीफुल ask him? Your turn now. <laughs> Go ahead and ask any questions. Uh, <laughs> this is also your chance to rag him, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Uh, Sherry, uh, Sherry, you have to, you have to, you have to start the proceedings. <laughs> <laughs> I have to start the procedure. Yes. Hi, Khaled. <laughs> Hi, Cherry. I, whatever I have, I always ask him. And as a, as all of you all know, that I came to Baba through Khaled. It was he who introduced Mir Baba to me. Although he tried since 2018, but finally in 2020, I was at the feet of Baba, and no looking back. So. Uh, I really take this opportunity to thank you, Khalid. Honestly, you're my spiritual guru, and I look forward to any guidance, even today. So, I thank you, and I thank Baba. Thank you. It's Baba. the will of Baba. It's the will of Baba. So, yes. <laughs> thank you. Uh, cool. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Mama. Yeah, Baba. Uh, with the story of uh, Khalid. Uh, and i had seen his uh, uh, youtube presentation also uh, uh, there is a sort of a message here for all of us that baba said uh, that uh, i was rama i was krishna i was zarastra i was mahabharat i was jesus and all that so in kalit's life also he has experienced all different cultures so he is a sort of an amalgamation of uh, so many thought processes or concepts differing from each other and all that and uh, maybe subterranean he was struggling to understand himself and baba made it clear to him that everything is the same and i am here to guide you that may be the Uh, process because he went through that paranormal uh, experience also, and then established into the proper path by Baba. That's how I look at it. Maybe Kali has his own ideas. Yes, Kali. Yes, Mama Ji. I feel you know. Uh, it was the what you call the chakra view of Baba. Yeah. You know. in this krishna time you know he always leela i wouldn't say chakravi sorry i would say the leela leela he yes leela he got me through uh, everything you know all the exposures and even something as a paranormal thing you know you know where we happened you know, sometime probably i would share with you some of the uh, haunted places that we have visited and we have paranormal photographs so he through this he he brought up out the exposure of my question you know what lies beyond the religions uh, the so called religions that i was exposed to hinduism christianity islam through that also you know so this entire play was put up by him to explain to me or to bring about to me that you know ultimately it ends in a zero and the uh, home point of the zero is meher baba yes. thank you mama ji yes jai baba very interesting uh, summary and i i, I think uh, it 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 shows that this, there's a lot more to come uh, khalid i'm sure that lot more will unfold and you can you, you can be probably uh, like you've already done with uh, uh, for example sherry right and all of us got to know about this uh, your life will be a good uh, uh, example and and kind of a 
uh, uh, case study for how Baba works and how Baba draws uh, souls uh, to him. So that's a good uh, point, Mama. Thank you. Anybody else quickly? Uh, we'll um, go to the next part of our program now. Yeah. Yeah, JJ Baba, ahead, uh, something, something very realistic and com comes from your heart. And uh, also, you know, uh, it also again conveys that Baba has his own way of, you know, he is a, a superb, you know, magnet. He has his own way of drawing people towards him. And, uh, and also that, you know, that all are one. We all are one is what I think is the ultimate, the oneness of everybody is what is getting what is the message i get while i listen to you today yeah it's a, it's a very nice uh, thing and also that you know all other things are like meditation or occultism or whatever are all tools so it again reinforces what we have done while reading the discourses and the god speaks jay baba so true ashokji so true he who is with baba is always with baba the coming takes different path, the coming takes a time, but then he is always with Baba and he has to come to Baba and merge to Baba. Jai Baba. Jai Baba. Jai Baba. Jai Baba. Thank you very much. So with Jai that, Baba. Uh, Baba. Uh, <coughs> I will stop recording and end this part of the program.